Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now, before we get into the show, first off, man, if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you're the first ones to know when my next video will come out because I'm here each and every single week. So make sure you hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And then next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. You click on that bell. And when you click on that bell, you'll be the first ones to know when my next video is uploaded. And one last thing, and one last thing. Don't forget to be awesome. So yeah, don't forget to be awesome. And yeah, man, sit back, chillax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, because you're watching The Ryan Awesome Show. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Ryan Awesome Show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Sh Show. Now today, on the Ryan Awesome Show, we'll be talking about Hell in a Cell 2021. Now man, with this pay-per-view, man, it wasn't bad. It was not bad, man. This was just good. Wasn't the best show. You know, not everything on this show was good. You know, we did have some good matches. You know, that both Hell in the Cell matches were great. The women's Hell in the Cell match was great. And, you know, the Lashley and the McIntyre Hell in the Cell match was great. But, yeah, going into Hell in the Cell, like, I really, really didn't care about the pay-per-view pay because, like, we don't need a Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. Like, we really don't. You know, because Hell in a Cell, it's a, like, it shouldn't even be a pay-per-view. It should just be a, a, a match. And Hell in a Cell, the Hell in a Cell match is a match that, you know, a rivalry's in. And more than likely, the matches that we saw tonight, the rivalries are not over. The rivalries will not be over. You know, the McIntyre and the Lashley matches, you know, the, the feud will be over. Because McIntyre, he can't challenge for the championship anymore. And the Bianca Belair and Bailey match. Possibly, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that the feud is over with them. But yeah, you know everything else. Everything else was good too. Not not the not the Bliss and the Shayna Baszler match. That was the worst part of the show. But yeah, but yeah, it it, it still turned out to be a good show, man. It wasn't it wasn't all that bad, you know. But yeah, so this is the Hell in the Cell review, the Hell in the Cell 2021 review on D Ryan Awesome Show. On this Father's Day, so once again, I like to wish all fathers a happy Father's Day. Hope you guys are having a great day. And so yeah, man. So yeah, I did watch the pre-show. I did watch the pre-show for the first time in a while. And you know, we did have some technical difficulties in the pre-show because the pre-show it was not working. I, because I know I know everybody was having a problem with it because people was tweeting it out. I'm glad I wasn't the only one because at first it was it wasn't loading. It wasn't loading at all. Like it kept it was on the loading screen, like when I when I pulled it up. And so some people had like C D N it said C D N era or C N D era or something like that. But yeah. So yeah, so the pre show it did cut back on. You know, people were complaining about it, so it did cut back on. So the pre show was on. And so yeah, we did get a match on the pre show. And it was Mandy Rose with Dana Brooke versus Natalia, who is one half of the Women's Tag Team Champions with Tamina Snooker in her corner. And so, yeah, so both ladies, they try to out-wrestle each other. And so Rose, she had targeted Natalia's throat. So, yeah, we had a lot of throat, a lot of throat shots in this in this show. A lot of people going after the throat on this show. But, yeah, I digress. But, yeah, so 
Rose, she had to control of the break. No, not control of the break. She took control of the match. There wasn't no commercial breaks. And so, yeah, so Natalia, she started fighting back. We had a dive and drop kick to Natalia, and she kicked out. And we had a discus clothesline to, to Mandy Rose. We have a knee strike to Natalia. And we had both ladies that were trading roll-ups. And then Natty, to end the match, she had locked in a sharpshooter submission to Mandy Rose to win the match. So Mandy Rose taps out, so therefore Natalia wins the match. I don't know why this match was on a pay-per-view, on a, on a pre-show, on, on a pay-per-view period, man. You could have just saved this for Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or whatever show they on. But, yeah, this match did not need to be on a pre-show or, 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 the, or the main show. Not, it shouldn't even have been on a pay-per-view, period. But, yeah. But the match, it was okay. match was okay. But I would have just put it on Raw. Put it on Raw or SmackDown. But, yeah, so that was it with the pre-show. And that was our only match on the pre-show. So, yeah, we started off the main show with a Hell in a Cell match. And it was with the women. And it was for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So yeah, this is one of the best matches on the show. And so yeah, so this is it was Bailey versus Bianca Belair, who is the SmackDown Women's Champion. And so yeah, right in the beginning of the match, we had Belair. She had took out Bailey, and then Bailey she pulled out chairs and she tried to use the chairs, but Bianca Belair stopped her. And so Belair she had used her her braid as a weapon. And, you know, Bailey, she had the chair in her hand, so she used the chair as a shield while Bianca Belair was using the braid as a weapon. So I thought that was cool that Bailey used the chair as a shield. And so, yeah, so Bailey, she, tar she targeted Bianca Belair's arm. And so, yeah, so Bailey, she had pulled out some steel steps and she brought it into the ring. And we had a knee to Belair's face. And so, yeah, so Bailey, she had tied up Bianca Belair's braid on the rope, on the bottom rope. And so. Yeah, so Bailey she tried to attack Belair while she was tied up to the rope. But Belair she had tripped Bailey into the steel steps that she brought in the ring. And so Belair she had untied herself. And so Belair she attacked Bailey. And then Bailey she started biting Bianca Belair's arm. And so so yeah, this is nice right here. We had Bailey, she had pulled out the two kendo sticks from last year. The the whole botch with the kendo sticks from last year with her match with Sasha Banks. And so yeah, so she pulled it out. And you know she wanted, like she she had it she had it draped on the steel cage. Like she had, she had brought two of them. She had brought two of them out, and then she grabbed she grabbed the two kendo sticks and she hit Bel Air with it. She hit Bel Air with the kendo sticks, and so we had a sunset flip power bomb to Bel Air into the cage. And so yeah, so this is the part when she pulled out both kendo sticks. So we had two double two double kendo sticks taped together, and she. Draped it from the ring into the cage. And so Belair, she had put Bailey through those those sticks, through those kendo sticks. So the kendo sticks are broken. And so, yeah, so Belair, she had hit Bailey with the chair. And then Bailey, she tied Bianca Belair's braid again on the, but the, yeah, she tied it again, but this time she tied it on the bottom of the chair. And so, yeah, so Bailey, at that point, she was laughing, maniacally, she was laughing. And so Bailey, she went for a knee strike, but Belair, she had pulled the chair into Bailey's way, so Bailey had hit her knee on the chair. And so, yeah, and then this time we had Belair, she used her hair again, so she tied her hair. So Belair had tied her hair on Bailey's wrist, on her arm. And so, yeah, kind of like the bull rope match, so Bailey wouldn't escape. And so, yeah, so she started to beat down on Bailey, and we had kendo shots. We had kendo stick shots to Bailey, and, you know, Bailey, she. You know, she was getting beat down, and so she begged the referee to open up the gate, open up the door, the cage door. And so the referee had said, no, no, I'm not going to open up the cage door. And if I do, and you walk out, you're going to be forfeit. You're going to forfeit the match. And I was like, what? Like, forfeit the match? If you leave the Hell in a Cell match, you're going to forfeit the match? I've seen a lot of people leave the Hell in a Cell match, and the match still went on. So I, I did not understand that part. And so, yeah, and he said, no escape. I was, all right, the Undertaker, the Undertaker and Mankind. When the Undertaker had threw Mankind off of the top of the hell in the cell, you gonna tell me that that match was forfeited? But yeah, but yeah, so, so yeah, that was it with that with that part. And so Bailey, she had hit one of her finishing moves, the Rose Plant. I think that's what she calls it on Bianca Belair while Belair she was trapped on the on the ladder. So Bailey had put Belair on the ladder. 
And so, yeah, so Bailey, she had hurt her knee. She had hurt her knee right off of that move. And so Belair, she had kicked out. And so we had Bianca Belair. She had the glam slam to Bailey on a turnbuckle face first. And we had a running senton bomb to Bailey on the ladder. So that had to hurt, man. That had to hurt. And we had a KOD. We had a KOD. Bianca Belair's finishing move to KOD to Bailey on a ladder to win the match. So that was a crazy spot right there. So Bianca Belair wins the match and is still, still the SmackDown Women's Champion. So yeah, this is a really good match, man. Probably the best match on the show. One of the best matches on the show. But but the the McIntyre and Lashley match, I really like that match too. But yeah, the feud itself, the feud itself, it didn't need the Hell in a Cell. Like it really didn't. You know, because the feud, it was terrible. Like, the feud was all about somebody's laugh. You know, Bailey laughing at Bianca Belair and all that stuff. And Bianca saying that, you know, she had to overcome bullies and all that stuff. Like, dude, it, it was terrible, man. It was terrible. But the match itself was not terrible. But it, the match, I could have done without the Hell in a Cell match. Because it, the feud did not need to be a Hell in a Cell match. The match, the feud wasn't even built up long enough to be a Hell in a Cell match. But yeah, so... Yeah, it would it would have been fine if it was just a, a normal match, but this match was still good. It was still good. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had Megan Morant. I think that's her name, the new interviewer backstage. She had interviewed still the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bianca Belair. And so Belair, she had said the match with, that she had with Bayley was brutal and all that stuff and that she would never forgive Bayley on what she did to her in the past. So, yeah, that was it with that. Who's next for Bianca Belair? I'm guessing Sasha Banks. Where is Sasha Banks? I don't know. I, with Sasha Banks, I'm probably, I'll am probably i probably save her for SummerSlam. I'll probably save her when fans come back. Now, fans do come back in July for that Money in the Bank pay-per-view. But, you know, I'll, I'll probably save it for SummerSlam because that's a SummerSlam match right there. You know, anybody with Sasha Banks. You know, Sasha Banks versus Bayley. Sasha Banks versus Bianca. You know, it'll be a great match, man. But yeah, I'll, I'll save Sasha Banks for SummerSlam, but I don't know where she is. She hasn't been on SmackDown. But yeah, and we haven't even heard of Sasha Banks. You know, she took a break. Like, if he, she was, what, how long she been out for? Like two months? She been out for two months. I think the last time we saw her was on that episode of SmackDown when, you know, the interviewer had asked her about uh, her, her comments on Bianca Belair winning a championship from Sasha Banks. So, yeah, so Sasha Banks, she never got in her rematch. She never got in her rematch, and she deserved a rematch. So, yeah, so that's that might be a SummerSlam match. I don't know. But if it is, I'll go for it, man. But, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, so right after that, we have Bobby Lashley, the almighty WWE champion, Bobby Lashley, and MVP. They were backstage, and they were backstage in their locker room, and they were surrounded by ladies and all that stuff. And the ladies and MVP were hyping up. Lashley for his Hell in a Cell match that he had with McIntyre. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so right after that, we had Alexa Bliss. She spoke about, you know, Lily. She was in a playground. She, she talked about Lily, her dog, her doll, Lily, Lily the doll. And so, yeah. And so she said that, you know, whatever knocks on her door and all that stuff, you know, you will never know who will open up the, who will open up the door. That's what she said. So... So so she was basically saying that, you know, don't don't take me lightly. You know, don't underestimate me. And so, yeah, that was it with Alexa Bliss. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had a match. And it was Cesaro, or Seth Rollins, like to say, Zazaro versus Seth Rollins. So this is good. This is a good match. So, yeah, so Cesaro, he was making his entrance to the ring. And you had Rollins, he attacked Cesaro from behind while Cesaro was making his entrance. And so, yeah, so Cesaro, he was fighting back, and then the bell finally rung. We had a big boot to Rollins to knock him out of the ring. We had a European uppercut to Rollins, and then Rollins, he had poked Cesaro in the eye. And we had a DDT to Cesaro, and we had a deadlift vertical suplex to Rollins. So Cesaro, he had muscled up Seth Rollins and hit a vertical suplex on Rollins. So I thought that was really nice. And so, yeah, we had a diving knee to Cesaro in his face. and we had European uppercuts and punches to Rollins. And then Cesaro, at one point, he had took off Seth Rollins' glove, that one glove that he wear only on one hand. He had took off the glove, and he had shoved the glove in Seth Rollins' mouth. So I, I thought that was nasty, really nasty. And so, 
Yeah. So Cesaro, he had took out Rollins. He attacked Rollins, and then Cesaro, he had took the glove out of Rollins' mouth, and he had pump kicked. He pumped kicked the the glove into the crowd. And so yeah, so Rollins he ended up fighting back. He had an elbow to the back of Cesaro's head, and he kicked out. And so right after that, we had Rollins. He was yelling at Cesaro. And he was saying that, you, you know, you think you're better than me? You think you're better than me, Cesaro? And so, yeah, so we had Rollins. He had locked in the Fujiwara armbar on Cesaro. And then Cesaro had fought out of it. And we had the Falcon's arrow to Cesaro. And he kicked out. I love that move, the Falcon's arrow, man. That's a really nice move. Especially when Seth Rollins hit it on the top rope. He hit that superplex and he hit it into the Falcon's arrow. I like that spot, too. But he didn't hit that spot in the match. But yeah, we had a spinning back kick to Cesaro, so I thought that was a nice move. That faint, that faint back spinning kick that he he started to use now, I thought that was a nice move. And so yeah, we had a discus clothesline to Rollins from Cesaro, so that he paying homage to Mr. Brody Lee. And so yeah, so we had a Cesaro swing to Rollins, and then we had Cesaro. He had locked in a sharpshooter on Rollins, and then Cesaro had turned in he he turned the sharpshooter into a crossface. So I thought that was a nice transition move from Cesaro. And then Cesaro, he had locked on the sharpshooter again. And so Cesaro, he started going after Rollins' arm. And we had a, to end the match, we had Cesaro. So yeah, Cesaro, he tried to go for the Cesaro swing, but Rollins had caught him with an inside cradle to win the match. So Seth Rollins wins the match. And so yeah, so really good match. Really good match, man. These guys, they work really well together. Really well together. And we might, we will be seeing them again. We will be seeing them again. So... Because, you know, because Seth Rollins, he had his, you know, because Cesaro, he got his win at WrestleMania, and now Seth Rollins beat him tonight. So we might get a rematch probably at that Money in the Bank pay-per-view or probably at SummerSlam, probably. But, yeah, but if they're going to do a rematch, they're probably going to do it in front of fans again because the fans really love that match at WrestleMania that, that they had. But, yeah, that was it with that. And, yeah, and Rollins, he had to win. He had to get his win back because if Rollins would have lost again, man, that would have been it. It would have been it for Rollins because Cesaro, man, he been embarrassing him. He been embarrassing Rollins on SmackDown. So, yeah, that was it. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had Sarah Schreiber or Schreiber, however you pronounce her last name. She interviews Shayna Baszler, the submission magician Shayna Baszler with Nia Jax and Reginald. And so, yeah, so... So, yeah, so Sarah, Sarah Schreiber, she had mentioned Lily the doll. And so Shannon, she had told Sarah to, hey, don't mention her name again. And so, yeah, so Shannon, she had said that tonight that she will end the feud. She will end the feud tonight. And so Reginald, he tried to kiss Shayna Baszler's hand. Like, he said something. I didn't even understand a word that he said, dude. And so he kissed Shayna Baz Baszler's hand. And so Shayna Baszler had slapped him in his face with, with her back hand. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had the match. It was Shayna Baszler with Nia Jax and Reginald in her corner versus Alexa Bliss. And so, yeah, this was probably the worst match on the show. The worst match on the show. And so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so first off, we had Alexa Bliss. At first, she was just staring at Shayna Baszler. They were both staring at each other, and nobody wanted to make a move. And so, yeah, so Reginald had got on the apron. He tried to distract Alexa Bliss. But, yeah, so Baszler, she had attacked Alexa Bliss off of the distraction from Reginald. And we had kicks to Baszler, so Bliss was fighting back. And then Reginald, again, got on the apron. And so the referee told him to get down and all that stuff. Should have got ejected from ringside. All that, all the interferences, man. And so, yeah, so Bliss had stared Reginald down. He tried to cover up his face because on Monday Night Raw, from what I heard, he got hypnotized by Alexa Bliss, so he covered up his face so he wouldn't get hypnotized again. And so, yeah, we had a gut wrench suplex to Bliss. And Bliss, she started laughing. So every time Alexa Bliss, she took pain in this match, she kept laughing. And so, basically, she had targeted Alexa Bliss's arm. And so, so basically, she had stomped on Alexa Bliss's arm. And so, Bliss, she was yelling and screaming and all that stuff because, you know, she was in pain. Her arm just got stomped. And so, yeah, so right after that, she just started laughing after that. She started laughing. And so, Bliss, she stared at Baszler while she was locked in the hole. Like, I think she had, like, had her, like, in a wrist lock or something like that. And so, she stared at Shayna Baszler. And so, Baszler, she stopped. She stopped what she was doing. So, she let go of the hold. And so, yeah, so Bliss, she started to fight back. And then Bliss had hit a DDT on Baszler, and she kicked out. 
And so Nia Jax was outside of the ring. And so Alexa Bliss, she had stared at Nia Jax. And so Jax had stared at Alexa Bliss too. And so Nia Jax was hypnotized. And so she like she she hypnotized her. So Alexa Bliss, you know, made Nia Jax do whatever she wanted to do. And so Alexa Bliss made Nia Jax slap Reginald in the face. So Nia Jax, she slapped a taste right out of his mouth. She slapped him hard. So yeah, so Nia Jax had slapped Reginald in his face, slapped him to the ground. And so we had a twisting DDT to Baszler. And to end the match, we had a twisted bliss. We had a twisted bliss to Shayna Baszler to win the match. So Alexa Bliss wins the match. And it, oh my God, man, this sucked. This was bad, dude. This was terrible. This was absolutely terrible. Alexa Bliss beating Shayna Baszler, dude. Dude, that's that's unheard of, dude. That that dude, that would never that would have never happened to Shayna Baszler. That Shayna Baszler in NXT would have ripped her head off. Would have would have ended the match in five seconds. And you have you have her lose to Alexa Bliss, dude. Like really? Alexa Bliss is like what? Four foot nine, five foot tall. You have a beat Shayna Baszler, dude. A legit a legit fighter man? A legit per, like a, a legit wrestler, man? You have Alexa Bliss beat Shayna Baszler, dude. I like, dude, why why is Shayna Baszler losing, period, dude? Why is she losing, period? Shayna Baszler, man, she should be going after the Raw Women's Championship. She be she should be on her own and not in some tag team with Nia Jax. Shayna Baszler is a loner. She is a loner. She don't need nobody. She don't need nobody to watch her back. Like she everything that she done, she done by herself. The fact that she haven't even contend for the women's championship yet is is freaking disgusting, dude. It's not right. She should have at least held that championship once. She that she should have at least held the championship once, but she never held the women's championship. Never, never. But yeah, this this was the worst match on the show. The worst match on the show. But yeah, that was it with that. Dude, and another thing, dude, I don't even know why this match was on Hell in a Cell either. This this is not a pay per view match. This is not a pay per view match. So why was it on Hell in a Cell? Why was this on a pay per view tonight? You could have you could have at least saved some extra time by getting rid of this match. You could have saved it on Monday Night Raw. You could have put it on Monday Night Raw. Probably would have been not better, but it it would have made the show better if this show was off of off of the pay per view. But yeah, that was it with that man. That was it with that. This ugh, sucked, dude. Absolutely sucked. But yeah, that was it with that. So. Right after that, we had a match, and it was Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. So, yeah, so this match was good, too. This match was good. You know, I don't know what else they can do in their matches, dude, because they fight all the time. Like, they never they never stop fighting each other. So, I don't know what else they could have done in this match. But, yeah, so, so, yeah, so both of these guys, they went right after each other at the start of the bell. And so, Owens, he started coughing and spitting because of that, you know, because of Commander Aziz, he had took out. Kevin Owens on SmackDown with that Nigerian nail. I think that's what you call it. That Nigerian nail. A move that Umaga used to use. That thumb. That thumb strike to the throat. And so, yeah. So, Owens, he was selling the the Nigerian nail. And so, yeah. So, Owens, he had threw Zayn onto the rope. On the top rope. And we had a cannonball to Zayn. He had kicked out. And so, Zayn, he had targeted the throat. So, so yeah. We had Zayn, he had... Yeah, through he threw Kevin Owens into the rope and his throat had hit the rope. And so we had a Tope on Hero to Owens and then Zayn had c- took control of the match at that point. And so yeah, so Owens, you know, I think Owens had hurt himself or Sami Zayn hurt Kevin Owens off of that Tope on Hero. So Zayn I think he had landed on on Kevin Owens' shoulder right off of that Tope on Hero. And so the arm was the focus, the arm and the shoulder was the focus of the match. And so Owens, he went right after Sami Zayn. And so we had a clothesline of Zayn outside the ring. And then we had a senton. We had a senton bomb to Sami Zayn off the ring apron. And so Zayn, he had got his knees up at the last second. He got his knees up. So that had to hurt both of them, man. Kevin Owens, and it had to hurt Sami Zayn too because you got all that weight crashing down on your knees. So both of these guys, they hurt. And so, yeah, so they got back into the ring. We had a blue thunder bomb to Owens. And he kicked out. I love the blue thunder bomb, man. I really do. And so we had punches and chops to Zane. So Kevin Owens was fighting back. We had a half and half suplex to Owens. And, you know, 
Yeah, yeah, half and half suplex to Owens, and then Owens, yeah, got his good shoulder up, so he used the good shoulder to, you know, kick out. So, yeah, we had a stunner to Zayn outside the ring, so he used the good hand, the good arm to hit the stunner. And so, yeah, so the referee was counting to 10, and so Kevin Owens, he was in the ring, but Sami Zayn, he made it back in the ring at 9, so he almost got counted out, bro. Almost got counted out. And so, yeah, so both of these guys, at that point, they were going back and forth with strikes and headbutts. And so Zane he had run right after Owens' arm. And so so Zane he had kicked Kevin Owens into the rope. And so his throat throat had hit the rope again. And so to end the match, we had Sami Zayn. He had his finishing move, the Haluva kick to Kevin Owens to win the match. And that was it. So Sami Zayn wins the match. And just like what I said, man, this was a good match, bro. And, you know, I don't know what else they can do. I don't know what else they can do in their matches because they, they've been in the ring like freaking a a hundred million times, dude, on the indies and NXT, on a main roster. I don't know what else they can do, man. They they have great chemistry, bro. They have great chemistry, and they have that they have like that 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 fight forever type feud. That fight forever type feud. Like they will never stop fighting. They will never stop fighting. But yeah, and it it was a must win. It was a must win for Sammy because you know Sammy he had lost that WrestleMania to Owens, and you know Sammy Zayn he hasn't been. I guess he hasn't been winning a lot lately. He hasn't been winning a lot. But, yeah, it was a must win for Sami Zayn. And, you know, I'm guessing that this feud is not over with either. Kevin Owens is going to complain that he got, you know, he got attacked on Friday, I guess. He got attacked on Friday, and then he wasn't at 100%. So that's why he didn't perform well, or that's why he didn't get the win. So I'm, I'm guessing we're getting a, a rematch with these guys. But, yeah, just like what I said, man, I don't know what else they can do, bro. I don't know what else they can do. But, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, so right after that, we had a match, and it was for the Raw Women's Championship. And so, yeah, it was Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley, who is the Raw Women's Champion. Now, this match was good. This match was good, but I did not like the ending. Did not like the ending. So, yeah, so Charlotte... You know, so right after the championship inter introduction from the ring announcer, we had the referee had held up the belt, the Raw Women's Championship. And so, yeah, Charlotte, she had took the championship away from the referee. And so, she, Charlotte, she had threw the championship at Rhea Ripley right in her face. And so, yeah, she threw the title at Rhea Ripley. And so, yeah, so we had a big boot to Ripley. So, Charlotte, she tried to end the match early. And so, she tried to go for roll-ups and all that stuff. And Ripley had kicked out. And so... Yeah, Rhea Ripley, she had hit a big boot to Flair. So she had a big boot of her own. And so Charlotte, she had tripped up Ripley on the top rope because Ripley was going for a top rope move. And so Charlotte, she had kicked Ripley into the barricade. And we had a super kick to Flair. And we had a heel hook submission move to Ripley. And then Charlotte, she had a basement drop kick. I mean, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, she had a basement drop kick to Charlotte. And we had a diving drop kick to Charlotte, and she kicked out. And then Rhea Ripley, she had locked in her, her submission move, the prism lock. I think that's what she called it. The prism lock that reversed Texas Cloverleaf to Charlotte, and she rolled out of it. And so, yeah, so Ripley, her head had hit the turnbuckle right after that. And so, yeah, so Charlotte, she had the natural selection to Ripley. And so Charlotte had went for the cover, and she tried to use the ropes as extra leverage by getting her foot on the rope. And so... Ripley, she had kicked out anyway, but the referee had shot her leg on a rope. And so, yeah, we had a German suplex to Charlotte, and we had a backbreaker into a flatliner to rear Ripley into the turnbuckle. And we had a moonsault. I, I like this spot, man. We had a moonsault. Even though I don't like Charlotte moonsault, this is was, this was a nice spot. We had a moonsault to Ripley, so she hit the moonsault, and she missed the moonsault, and she had a standing moonsault on rear Ripley. So I thought that was nice. So that was Shades of Andrade El Idolo of AEW. So I think she should probably stick to that move instead of just going for the moonsault by itself. But her hitting that move, that, that move that Andrade C. and Almas hit, I thought that was nice. And so, yeah. So, yeah, we had a superplex. Yeah, because they're engaged, too. They're engaged. So happy that she hit that spot. So, yeah, we had a superplex to Charlotte. And she kicked out. And so, yeah, so both of these ladies, they're going back and forth. And we had a riptide to Charlotte. So she hit the riptide close to the ropes. And so this is a dumb move. This is a dumb move by Rhea Ripley. So, yeah, she hit the riptide to Charlotte near the ropes. And so she went for the cover, knowing that she was by the ropes. But she hooked the inside leg instead of hooking the outside leg. 
and you know Charlotte she had got a leg on the rope so so yeah so Ripley she was upset that Charlotte got a foot on the rope but yeah you don't have nobody to blame but yourself could have you should have just pulled her into the middle of the ring or just hooked the the outside leg and so yeah so so yeah so Charlotte she had kicked Ripley's leg into the turnbuckle so she targeted the leg. And so Charlotte, she had speared Rip Ripley. And so Charlotte, she had locked in a figure four leg lock. So she tried to go for the figure eight, but she had the figure four locked in. And so Ripley, she had locked, she, Ripley, she had rolled out of the ring to break up the submission move. And so, yeah, they were by the announce table. And so Rhea Ripley, she had grabbed the announce cover, the announce, the announce table cover. And she had hit Charlotte Flair with the announce table cover. So that was a disqualification. So Rhea Ripley, she got disqualified. So... So therefore, Charlotte Flair wins the match, but still, but still the Raw Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. So although Charlotte Flair won the match, she is not the new Women's Champion. Rhea Ripley, she lost by DQ, but she still is the Raw Women's Champion. And so, yeah, so right after that, you know, we had Charlotte, we had Ripley, she attacked Charlotte after the match. And so she had a riptide on Charlotte, and that was it, man. So that was a heelish move from Rhea Ripley. That was a heelish move. And yeah, they might. I don't know if they're gonna turn Rhea Ripley heel. I'm not. I'm not for Charlotte being a babyface. I'm not. Charlotte Flair. She's better as a heel. She's better as a heel, and she nobody likes her anyway, dude. And so yeah. So yeah, this is this is good, but I don't know why the match needed to end in a disqualification. Because you in you end a match in a disqualification, dude. The whole match was pointless. It was pointless. If you're gonna end the match in a disqualification like that and not have a clear winner, dude, like dude, that's not that's not right, dude. It like it made everything feel like it was unimportant. Like the match itself, it was good. The match was good, but the ending, you ended in a disqualification. Like, dude, what was the point of having a match if that was gonna happen that way? If, that, if the match was gonna end that way, why was why did you book the match? But yeah, that was it. I was I was expecting Charlotte to win, but you know. Why, like, why prolong it instead of just getting it done right now so we don't have to see it again? So we don't have to see the match again. But, yeah, that was it with that. But, yeah, so Charlotte, she will get another match. She will get a rematch and all that stuff because she's going to cry. She's going to cry to management that she got screwed over and that Rhea Ripley, she couldn't beat her. So that's why she got disqualified. She got herself disqualified on purpose and all that stuff. But, yeah, but, yeah. People, people are sick of it. People are sick of the of the rematches, man. That's all we see are rematches, you know. But yeah, we are gonna see a rematch with Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. It's it's, it's probably gonna be at SummerSlam. It's probably gonna be at the Money in the Bank pay per view. But yeah, I don't I don't I don't want to see another match. I don't want to see another match with these two. But yeah, but yeah, that, that the the way that Rhea Ripley came off, it was a heel move when she attacked Charlotte, you know. But yeah, that was it with that. That was it with the match. But yeah, right after that, we had the main event, and it was a Hell in a Cell match, and it was for the WWE Championship. So yeah, this was McIntyre's final championship match. So if McIntyre would have lost this match, no more WWE Championship matches for him. No more. And so, so yeah, it was Drew McIntyre versus the almighty WWE Champion, Bobby Lashley, with MVP in his corner. And so, yeah, man, Bobby Lashley entrance. I love his entrance, dude. I love his entrance. I love the music, and I love the entrance, dude, with the lightning and stuff. The the intro, the intro to his entrance, I love that. And they showed the, the lightning bolt just striking down. I love it, dude. And so, yeah. So, yeah, so we had Lashley, you know, at the start of the bell, you know, Lashley, he didn't go after McIntyre. He went under the ring to grab a weapon. But McIntyre, he had stopped Lashley. And so, yeah, so McIntyre, he had smeared Lashley's face into the cage or the cell, whatever you want to call it. And so Lashley, he tried fighting back, but it wasn't working. And so McIntyre, he had threw Lashley into the cage. So that was nasty. That was a nasty spot. So, yeah, it looked like he had suplex throw him into the, 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 the cage and he had fell on the ground. So that had to hurt, bro. And so, yeah, so McIntyre, he had hit Lashley with the steel steps. And we had an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex to Lashley. We had a kendo stick shot to Lashley, so McIntyre used the kendo stick. And then Lashley, he had hit McIntyre with MVP's cane that MVP walks out to. And so so MVP had slid in the, the cane through the cell, and so Lashley had used the cane on McIntyre. He had hit him in the throat with it. So this is our third throat shot. 
on the show. So we had Natalia. We had Mandy Rose going for the throat. We had Charlotte Flair going for the throat. Or, or Kevin Owens going for the throat. And now we have this. We have this. And so, yeah, so we had Lashley. He had threw McIntyre into the cage. And we had an air raid crash. We had an air raid crash to Lashley on a steel step. So that had to hurt. That had to hurt. And so, yeah, so Lashley, he targeted McIntyre's throat. And so McIntyre, he had bounced off the cage. So Lashley had threw McIntyre into the cage. And so McIntyre, he had bounced off and gave Lashley a clothesline. And so McIntyre, he started throwing chairs into the ring. And we had a reverse Alabama slam to Lashley on a chair. And so at that point, I saw Lashley's shoulder. I saw Lashley's shoulder, and his shoulder looked nasty. It looked absolutely nasty. It, like, his shoulder was scraped, dude. I don't know if it came from that, 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 I don't know where it came from. It probably came from early in that match, early, the early parts of the match when he got thrown in that steel. Probably. I don't know what it was. But his shoulder, man, it looked absolutely nasty. But, yeah. We had McIntyre. He had hit Lashley with a chair. And so we had McIntyre. He hit the spine buster on Lashley. And he kicked out. And then McIntyre had powerbomb Lashley. And he also kicked out of that move. And so McIntyre, he had hit Lashley with the steel steps. And so Lashley had rammed the steel steps into McIntyre's throat, into the cage. And we had MVP. He had trapped McIntyre behind the kendo stick. So MVP had the kendo stick. Because Bobby Lashley had gave him a kendo stick. And so MVP, he had just... Put the kendo stick through the cell to trap McIntyre behind the behind the kendo stick, and so Lashley he started punching McIntyre like if he was like if he was a punching bag, and so we had two flatliners. We had two flatliners to McIntyre on a chair inside the ring, and so we had kendo. So McIntyre he hit not McIntyre, Lashley he hit McIntyre with the kendo sticks like over and over and over again, and so that fired up Drew McIntyre. And so, so McIntyre, he started fighting Bobby Lashley. He attacked Bobby Lashley. And so Bobby Lashley ended up poking McIntyre in the eyes. And so, yeah, so both of these guys, they tried to take each other out with chairs. But McIntyre, he had accidentally hit the referee with a chair. So the referee is out. And so McIntyre, he had one of his finishing moves, the Future Shock DDT to Lashley. And he tried to go for the cover. Dumb move. You know, you know, you know the referee is knocked out. Why would you go for the cover? But yeah, so he went for the cover. Nobody's counting because the referee's knocked out. And so there's a, there was another referee outside the ring who was watching the match. He tried to get himself in the in the ring. He tried to unlock the door to get himself in the ring. And so so yeah, so Lashley he had locked in the hurt lock. And so McIntyre he had rolled out of it. And so McIntyre he had hit his finishing move, the Claymore kick to Lashley, and the referee, the new referee, went for the cover. And so MVP, he had pulled out the referee outside the ring. And so McIntyre, he was upset. He was upset that, you know, MVP cost him the match because he almost won. And so somehow MVP, he got trapped in the cage. He got locked in the cage. I think the referee purposely locked him in the cage. Like, wh why would you lock them in the cage? <laughs> I thought that part was funny. I thought it was funny, man, that MVP, if they locked MVP in the cage, of all people, the referee, the referee locked MVP in the cage. So I thought that was funny. I thought that was really funny. And so so MVP, he he found out he was locked in the cage with McIntyre. And so McIntyre, he went right after MVP. And so McIntyre had took him out with a Claymore kick. And so, so Lashley, he had locked in the hurt lock on McIntyre outside the ring. But McIntyre, he had crashed into the, to the table to break up the hole so the table was broken. And so we had chair shots to Lashley. And then, you know, McIntyre tried to go for the Claymore kick again, but he missed. And so Lashley had hit the Uranagi to McIntyre off of the, the ring apron through the table that was outside the ring. And so Lashley, he tried to go for the spear, but he missed. And so McIntyre, he hit the Future Shock DDT to Lashley. And, you know, and then he tried to go for the Claymore kick. So McIntyre, he tried to go for the Claymore kick, but MVP, MVP, he had grabbed that McIntyre's foot. So he could stop him from hitting the Claymore kick. But, yeah, so Bobby Lashley, he had saw it. And so he took advantage of it. So he rolled up Drew McIntyre for the win for the 1-2-3. So Bobby Lashley wins the match. And is still, still, still the WWE champion. Still the almighty WWE champion. So, yeah, I thought this was a really good match. Really good match. Probably the best match on the show behind the, the SmackDown Women's Championship match. 
you know, brutal match too. These guys beat the crap out of each other. Like they really did, man. That shoulder, Bobby Lashley's shoulder, it looked nasty, man. It looked nasty. And I I did saw some bruises on McIntyre's body too. And so yeah, that's it, man. That's it for McIntyre, man. No more title shots. No more title shots for McIntyre. He can't complain. He cannot complain to management because everything that that happened in the match, it was legal. MVP getting involved in the match, that was legal. So, you know, McIntyre, he don't have nobody to blame but himself because he made the match. He made the match. Lashley didn't make the match. MVP didn't make the match. It was McIntyre made the match. He wanted, he wanted Lashley in the Hell in a Cell match. So, and he lost. He ended up losing. So, he don't have nobody to blame but himself. You know? And just like what I said before, everything was legal. MVP getting involved was legal. And so, yeah, but, yeah, I'm actually shocked that Lashley won, man. I thought they were going to give it to McIntyre. I thought they were going to get the win to McIntyre and have him, you know, challenge whoever, whoever he has to challenge and send Bobby Lashley after Brock Lesnar. But, yeah, that, that was it with that, man. What's next for McIntyre? I don't know. He has to build himself back up. He can't go for the WWE Championship no more, so he probably have to go to after the United States Championship. And, you know, Sheamus, you know, he – you know, he's familiar with Sheamus. He beat Sheamus before. He beat Sheamus before. So he might get that, that championship, automatic championship match, but that's not good. You got to build yourself back up in order to get a championship match. So McIntyre, he needs some wins. He needs some, he needs some wins before he go after Sheamus. But, yeah. But, yeah, the most important thing, what's next for Bobby Lashley, man? He's the WWE champion still, the WWE champion. What's next for him, bro? What's next for him? Now, Brock Lesnar could be coming back. Brock Lesnar could be coming back. So he probably might get the match that we all been waiting for. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. But the match, it don't need the title. It don't need the championship. Because if it's a championship match, you better believe Brock Lesnar, he will win that championship. Because Brock Lesnar, he is not going to come back to lose. He is not going to come back to lose to anybody. If he's in a championship match, he will most likely win that championship. And he's not going to show up. He's not going to show up on TV. He's going to hold the championship hostage and not show up on TV. So you don't want that. You do not want that to happen. You know, you want a champion that's on the show all the time. Not not every single week, but who's on the show. But, yeah, but Brock, when, when Brock wins the championship, he is not going to be on a show every week. He's not going to be on a show at all. He, he's only going to show up once a month. He's only going to show up once a month. But, yeah, but. You know, Brock Lesnar, he probably will be coming back. He probably will be going after Lashley. You know, the match should be good, but it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well for Lashley because he's going to lose that title. That's why I said, That's why I said, man, the match is going to – it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good if it's for a championship. So that's why I thought McIntyre was probably going to win. That's why McIntyre was probably going to win. We have Brock Lesnar go after Lashley, you know, not for the championship. But just to get the match out of the way because, you know, he always wanted the match – Lashley always wanted a match with Lesnar, but we never gotten it. When Lesnar was there, we never gotten a match, you know, because they're they're similar, they're, they're alike, they're alike, you know. But yeah, that that was it with the pay per view, man. That was it, you know. Good show, you know. It wasn't the best show, you know. The Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler match was a disgrace. It was terrible, but you know. Still, still wouldn't do a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I wouldn't do a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Just have a, if you want a Hell in a Cell, just have a Hell in a Cell match. And, oh yeah, another thing, we didn't even have Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns was not on the show tonight because they had the Hell in a Cell match with, he had the Hell in a Cell match with Rey Mysterio on SmackDown. So I see why they put it on SmackDown and not on this show because Roman Reigns, he does not need to be on this show. You know, because that's why we had the WWE Championship match. You know, Roman Reigns, he don't need to be on every single pay-per-view, you know. But, yeah. But Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, I think everybody probably would have wanted Roman Reigns on the show because Roman Reigns, he's the best right now. But, you know, I see why they put it on SmackDown to try to get their ratings up, to try to get their ratings up on SmackDown by having a Hell in a Cell match and all that stuff. But, yeah. But, yeah, man, that was it with the pay-per-view, man. That was it with the review. The Hell in a Cell review for Hell in a Cell 2021 on D-Ryan Awesome Show. And yeah, man, if you like this video, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button is a bell. Make sure you click on that bell to so be the first ones to know when my next video will come out. Because I'm here each 
in every single week. So make sure you hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. And then next to the subscribe button, there's a bell. You click on that bell. And when you do it, you will be notified, man. And you, you need to hit it or you'll miss out. And yeah, man, follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And comment down below, man. Tell me how you felt about Hell in a Cell. Tell me how you felt about Hell in a Cell in the comments down below. And yeah, man, share this video. Share this video with each and every single person that you come across, man. Each and every single person you come across on a day to day basis. And yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. See you guys on Tuesday for NXT. See you guys for Tuesday for NXT. And yeah, man. And once again, guys, thank you for the support, man. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, man. And if you miss anything, man, if you miss anything, the video is going to be right up here. The video is going to be right up here. It's my AEW review. If you missed that, that's my last video. So if you missed that, the video is going to be right up here. And the link to that video will be down below in the description. So make sure you check it out if you missed it. And yeah, man. And once again, guys, thank you, man. Thank you, awesome ones, for the love and support for the show. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, man. And yeah, man. And this has been the Ryan Awesome Show. Take care. Stay safe. And don't forget to be awesome. And that's that.